Garfield, ¿dónde están los muebles? Garfield, ¿dónde está la comida? Garfield, ¿dónde está Odie? Garfield, Garfield. Hello everybody, I welcome you to the ultimate Garfield iceberg. In today's video, we will go through all six levels of this wonderful iceberg, created by user Mary in the Iceberg Chart website, so massive props to her. Oh, and if you're playing a drinking game where every time I say Garfield, everyone takes a shot, I can guarantee you by minute one you'll feel sick, by minute five you'll have already succumbed to alcohol poisoning, and by minute 15 you'll already be inside a body bag. And with that disclaimer out of the way, Let's get into the video. Nineteen eighty nine Halloween Arc. Halloween nineteen eighty nine, or Garfield Alone, refers to a series of six highly unusual Garfield comic strips that first appeared in newspapers between Monday, October twenty third, and Saturday, October twenty eighth, nineteen eighty nine. The six strips, which were first published on the week before Halloween nineteen eighty nine, are unlike any other Garfield comic strips because they are not supposed to be funny. Instead, they intend to be frightening. They present a storyline in which Garfield suddenly finds himself in a future in which John and Odie no longer exist. The cat is left completely on his own and without any food in the house, which has long since been abandoned. Jim Davis has said, During a writing session for Halloween, I got the idea of this decidedly different series of strips. I wanted to scare people. And what do people fear most? Well, being alone. Chris Pratt as Garfield. This entry refers to the upcoming 2024 animated movie, Garfield, which as the entry stated, Chris Pratt is indeed voice acting as the one and only Garfield, which by the way, fun fact, Samuel L. Jackson will also be among the main cast. Garfield and Friends Garfield and Friends is an animated television series based on the Garfield comics. The show aired on CBS as part of its Saturday morning children's lineup from September 17, 1988 to December 10, 1994. The characters which appear in this animated series are Garfield, Normal, Odie, John Arbuckle, Arlene, Liz Wilson, Pookie and Penelope Pussycat. Garfield doesn't talk. This entry most likely refers to Silent Garfield, which are some edits of several Garfield comic strips where the Garfield speech bubble is erased, giving the impression he is just a regular fat ginger cat with an owner who has gone completely off the deep end. Garfield Kart Garfield Kart is a kart racing game published by Microids and developed by Artifact Studio. As it obviously looks like, it was a cash grab attempt at getting into the Garfield gamer market which didn't really succeed due to what critics claim the game to have unimaginative gameplay, low production value and poorly designed mechanics. The game was released for Microsoft Windows, Macintosh, Nintendo 3DS, iOS and even Android. The many platforms it was available for didn't save it from having some horrible deserved ratings. A sequel, Garfield Kart Furious Racing, was released in 2019. This game and its 2019 sequel were the final appearances of the Garfield show designs of these characters. Garfield Minus Garfield Garfield Minus Garfield is a webcomic made by Dan Walsh with the approval of Jim Davis himself. The comic itself is virtually identical to the regular Garfield comic strips, except it removes all characters except for Garfield's owner, John Arbuckle. The comics end up revealing a sad lonely man directing his self-hate and regrets at himself in his lonely house. Garfield His Nine Lives Quick disclaimer, this is a very important entry for later on in the iceberg, since it essentially becomes the backbone of several theories, so pay attention kiddos. Garfield His Nine Lives is a rather odd 1984 book of illustrated short stories that showcase the nine lives of Jim Davies' comic strip character, Garfield. The book is divided into ten segments, the first one displays the creation of cats in general, with the latter nine reveal events in Garfield's nine lives. Each of the nine stories has a short preface of Garfield in his modern incarnation and explains how these various lives shaped aspects of Garfield's personality, such as the origin of his fear of the veterinarian, his love of grinny behavior, his proclivity for a slothful lifestyle, and his extremely playful side. The book was later adapted into an animated television special in 1988 and a comic book by Boom Studios from 2014 to 2015. 
Garfield. Garfield refers to an unintentionally poor quality parody video of Garfield, made by the YouTuber Pilot Red Sun and uploaded on the 5th of April 2013. The popularity of the original video, which as of writing the script, has garnered a total of 14 million views and has managed to spawn a number of remakes and parodies featuring MS Paint artwork and the same voices from the text-to-speech narration. Here Comes Garfield Here Comes Garfield is a 1982 animated television special, it was the first half-hour Garfield TV special and it was directed by Phil Roman and featured Lorenzo Music as the voice of Garfield the house cat, as well as the voices of Sandy Kenyon, Henry Corden and Greg Berger. The special was first broadcasted on the 25th of October 1982 on CBS. It was a success and was nominated for two Emmy Awards. It was accompanied by a soundtrack album and a children's book adaptation and has been released on VHS and DVD. This is the first of 12 Garfield television specials made between 1982 and 1991. Jim Davis James Robert Davis, born July 28, 1945, is an American cartoonist, screenwriter and producer. He's best known as the creator of the comic strip Garfield and US Acres. Published since 1978, Garfield is one of the world's most widely syndicated comic strips. David's other comics include Tumbleweed, Gnorm Gnat and Mr. Potato Head. Now for those who aren't too interested in Jim Davis' life, skip to the timestamp currently displayed. Jim Robert Davis was born in Marion, Indiana on July 28, 1945. Davis grew up on a small black Angus cow farm in Fairmount, Indiana with his father James William Jim Davis, mother Annie Catherine Betty Davis and his brother Dave Davis. Davis' childhood on farm parallels the life of Garfield's owner, John Arbuckle, who was also raised on a farm with his parents and a brother, Doc Boy. John is a cartoonist who also celebrates his birthday on July 28th. Davis attended Ball State University where he studied art and business. While attending Ball State, he became a member of the Theta Chi fraternity. While attending Fairmount High School in 1959, Davis joined the staff on his school's new paper, The Breeze, We eventually became an art editor. This is where Davis' first comic was featured, apparently inspired by school life. Davis also drew the majority of the illustrations for his 1963 senior yearbook, reusing the same characters just as he currently does with his Garfield comic strips. Davis joined the faculty of Ball State University in Munis as an adjunct professor in fall 2006, lecturing on the creative and business aspects of the comic industry. Davis currently resides in Albany, Indiana, where he and his staff produce Garfield under his Pause Inc. company. Launched in 1981, Pause Inc. employs nearly 50 artists and licensed administrators who work with agents around the world managing Garfield's vast licensing, syndication and entertainment empire. In December 2019, Davis announced that he would be holding weekly auctions for the hand-painted Garfield comic strip mid from 1978 to 2011. As Davis explained, he started drawing comics digitally using a graphics tablet in 2011. Older comics remained sealed in a climate-controlled safe and Davis had to figure out what to do with them. Prior to creating Garfield, Davis worked for an advertising agency and in 1969 he began assisting Tom Ryan's comic strip Tumbleweeds. He then created a comic strip Gnorm Gnat that ran for two years in the Pendleton Times, a newspaper in Pendleton, Indiana. When Davis attempted to to sell it to a national comic strip syndicate, an editor told him, your art is good, your gags are great, but bugs? Nobody can relate to bugs. He then began studying the comic strips, still firmly believing that animals were funny. He then took note of how Snoopy was not only a scene stealer in the Peanuts comic strips, but that he was far more of a marketing success than his owner Charlie Brown. Deciding that the comic market was oversaturated with dogs, he decided to create a cat character as the lead of his next comic strip instead. From 1976 to early 1978, Davis then published a strip titled John in the Pendleton Times, which would later become Garfield, starting syndication in 41 newspapers on June 19, 1978. As of 2008, it was syndicated in 2,580 newspapers and was read by approximately 300 million readers every day. In the 1980s, Davis created the Barnyard Slapstick comic strip US Acres. Outside the US, the strip was also known as Orson's Farm. Davis, along with Brett Koth also made the 2000-2003 strip based on the Mr. Potato Head toy. And in 2019, Davis sold Pause Inc. to the mass media conglomerate Viacom, which months later merged with CBS Corporation to form Viacom CBS, also known as Paramount Global. 
John is a cartoonist. Well, um, yeah, John is confirmed to be a cartoonist. In the first comic strip, John is presented as a cartoonist. Garfield and Friends also shows him several times as a cartoonist. In the Garfield show, his occupation is a cartoonist. John was also seen doing his work briefly in the August 2nd, 2015 comic strip. Lyman. Lyman was one of the main characters in the Garfield comic strip. He was a friend and roommate of John Arbuckle and the original owner of OD. The comic strip had Lyman as one of the four main characters alongside Garfield, John and OD. The main cast was reduced to three when Lyman was removed from the comic strip by Jim Davis in 1983. According to Davis, Lyman's original purpose was to be someone who John could actually talk to and express other ideas. As a role gradually taken over by Garfield, himself. Once Lyman was no longer needed for that purpose, he was removed without explanation. Jim Davis has jokingly given explanations about Lyman's sudden disappearance and long absence from the strips, including Don't look in John's basement and He joined the Peace Corps and was never heard from again. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl As we all know, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is a 2021 crossover fighting game developed by Ludosity and Fairplay Labs and published by Game Mill Entertainment. It is the first console game in the Nickelodeon Super Brawl series of browser games and mobile games. Garfield is indeed a playable character. He was officially announced on December 7th, 2021 as the game's very first DLC fighter. He was released on December 9th, 2021 as part of a free update shortly following the alternate costume update. Pause Inc. Pause Incorporated, legally known as Pause Inc., is an American comic studio and production company founded by American cartoonist Jim Davis in 1981 to support the Garfield comic strips and its licensing. The company is located inside Paramount Global's headquarters building in New York City. It was originally located in Muniz, Indiana, relocated in 1989 from Davis' own farm when he was a boy. The Garfield Show The Garfield Show is a CGI animated television series produced by Dergard Media and Pause Inc. The animated series focuses on a new series of adventures for the characters of Garfield, Odie, and their owner, John Arbuckle, alongside staple characters from the strips and a number of unique additions for the program. Both Davis and producer Mark Evanier, who previously wrote episodes for the 1988 animated series Garfield and Friends, co-wrote stories for the program with the cast including Frank Welker, Wally Wingert, Julie Payne, Jason Marsden, and Greg Berger. Welker and Berger had previously voiced various characters in Garfield and Friends. The animated series premiered on the 22nd of December 2008 in France as Garfield and C, and on the 2nd of November 2009 in the United States. It ran for five seasons, with the last episode airing in America on the 24th of October 2016. Evanier stated shortly afterwards that it was on a hiatus. On the 6th of August 2019, an untitled Nickelodeon series based on the Garfield comic strip was announced, seemingly ending any chances of the Garfield show coming back. Live Action Garfield Movies There are a total of two live action Garfield movies, which are Garfield the Movie, which released in theaters on the 11th of June 2004, and Garfield the Tale of Two Kittens, which released on June 16, 2006. U.S. Acres U.S. Acres, also known as Orson's Farm outside of the U.S. and as Orson's Place in Canada, is an American comic strip that originally ran from 1986 to 1989, created by Jim Davis. U.S. Acres was launched on March 3rd, 1986, in a then unprecedented 505 newspaper by United Features Syndicate. For most of the last year of the strip's existence, Brett Koth, who had been assisting Davis on Garfield at the time, was given co-creator's credit in the strip and signed his name to the strips along with Davis. The strip was centered on a group of barnyard animals, with the main character being Orson, a small pig who had been taken from his mother shortly after being born. Arlene is a stray cat. In the book Garfield Judgment Day, it is actually revealed that Arlene is indeed, as the entry states, a stray cat, which she had never revealed to Garfield until an emergency situation brought it to light. Cartoon All-Stars Rescue Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue was an animated special that originally aired on ABC, CBS and NBC, among other stations in April 1990, featuring a crossover of various cartoon characters such as those from Alf, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Disney DuckTales, Winnie the Pooh, Muppet Babies, Garfield and Friends, The Real Ghostbusters, The Smurfs, The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Looney Tunes. Since Garfield, like all the other characters on the shows listed, was presented as nothing 
nothing more than a cartoon character come to life, and since this adventure does not tie in with any known stories, as either in print or in any visual media, it is considered non-canonical. Diana's Piano Diana's Piano is the sixth episode of Garfield His Nine Lives TV series who is reincarnated as a white cat called Diana. Her owner was a pianist called Sarah who got Diana from her mother. Sarah Dort Diana played many songs with Diana sitting on top of her piano. She stated that Diana could tell whenever Sarah made a mistake while playing the piano which inspired Sarah to become a better pianist. When Sarah left for college she didn't know who she would miss more, her parents or Diana. When Sarah came back home from college, she wanted to stay with Diana again. The day after, Sarah performed for Diana to show Diana her love. Diana passed away on top of Sarah's piano peacefully and implied to be a few years later, Sarah has a new cat named Patches who has a brown spot on his right eye and has short white fur. Direct-to-DVD Garfield Movies There are a total of three direct-to-DVD Garfield movies, which are Garfield Get Real 2007, Garfield's Fun Fest 2008, and Garfield's Pet Force 2009. Pretty interestingly is that there is a subreddit specifically dedicated to Garfield direct-to-DVD movies. It may not be very active, but at least it exists. Don't Call Me Doc Boy. This entry refers to the fact that John Arbuckle teases his little brother, Doc Arbuckle, by calling him Doc Boy, a nickname he hates being called. Doc is named after Garfield's creator, Jim Davis' own brother, Doc Davis. Garfield Game Boy. Garfield Game Boy is a pixel art animated short film that simulates scenes from a fictional horror video game, but with a sinister touch that brings it close to HP Lovecraft. The short, released on YouTube, became extremely popular, receiving more than 7 million views and spawning a fan cult phenomenon that led to the creepypasta Gorefield, which will be discussed later on on the iceberg. Garfield is dead theory. In the fall of 1989, Jim Davis produced a series of Halloween-based comic strips about Garfield waking up to an abandoned house. When Garfield finally accepted that he was alone, he suddenly brought back to John's house. Naturally, this storyline had several readers question the meaning behind the series of strips. Because of the strip's surreality regarding the Halloween story arc, it is commonly believed and theorized that Garfield had either died or that he was slowly starving to death and that the entire strip is his dying dream. This theory does make sense in some places. Throughout the strip, Garfield would often have dreams regarding food and he would constantly beg for John for his trademark dish, lasagna. When the creator of the strip himself, Jim Davis, heard about these rumors, he was reported as to have laughed for quite a long time. According to him, he had created these series of Halloween strips because the most common fear among several of his readers was being alone. He also confirmed that Garfield was very much alive and that the Halloween strips were canonical to the main strip strip. Garfield Alive Garfield the movie, identified on screen as simply Garfield, is a 2004 comedy film. It is a live-action adaptation to Jim Davis' comic strip of the same name. Directed by Peter Hewitt, it starts Brecken Mayer as John Arbuckle, Janitor Love Hewitt as Dr. Liz Wilson, and features Bill Murray as the voice of Garfield. The film was produced by Davis Entertainment Company and 20th Century Fox. It was released in the United States on June 11, 2004. Despite receiving negative reviews, from critics, the film was a commercial success, grossing $200 million on a $50 million budget. A sequel, Garfield The Tale of Two Kittens, was later released in 2006. Garfield Minus Third Panel Garfield Minus Third Panel is a subreddit dedicated to, well, as its name suggests, removing the third panel of the Garfield comic strips. Unlike previous entries related to the editing of the comic strips, which would make most of the time the comic look pretty sad and depressing, this time it makes them rather amusing and absurd due to them ending so suddenly and making some already funny strips even funnier. Garfield Parodies This entry is extremely vague due to how massive of an IP Garfield is, which just to put into perspective, there's an entire list of fan cast movies where characters from the movie are played by Garfield characters. By the way, the list which is currently on display is just the first three letters of the alphabet. Now going back to the main topic, this entry is actually marked as not safe for work, which implies there are certain Rule 34 parodies of Garfield which I'm not willing to go look for. So instead 
said I'll be listing some safe for Garfield parodies like Random Garfield Generator, which is, as the name implies, comic strips which have been randomly generated to produce rather humorous new, never be foreseen iterations of the Garfield comics. There's also Square Root of Minus Garfield, which is self described as webcomic devoted to parodies and mashups of the popular comic strip Garfield. We can also observe the parody Garfield as Garfield, in which a lasagna loving cat is replaced by former president James Garfield, and the final bizarre Garfield parody, Minus John plus John. As creator Chris Impink explains on the site, in my own fevered dream amidst the Watchmen zeitgeist, it occurs to me that John Arbuckle's existential woes have nothing on those of John Osterman, also known as Dr. Manhattan. The resulting hybrid comic conveys a similar Garfield-like humor with the same drawn aesthetic. Garfield vs. Sands. This entry most likely refers to the November 2021 Twitter post by the user at Art, which as the tweet reads, My teacher from college that does the pencil for the Garfield strips drew Garfield vs. Sands. And what's even funnier is that the creative Sands from Undertale himself, Toby Fox, later retweeted this post with his own reaction. Garfield's exact weight. This was revealed to be 27 pounds in the 21st of January 1986 strip. In a series of Ripley's parodies, when it says a John Arbuckle claims to own a cat, which is Garfield, who can eat 10 times its body weight. To verify this claim, we offered the cat 270 pounds of lasagna. The strip ended saying that the cat only ate 219 pounds of lasagna, and Garfield saying things went so well in rehearsal. Garfield's mom and grandfather. Garfield's mother gave birth to Garfield in an Italian restaurant. Garfield was taken away from his mother and became John Arbuckle's pet while he was still a very small kitten. In Garfield onto the town, Garfield accidentally finds himself back in the now abandoned restaurant where he was born. He was reunited with his mother and meets other members of his family including his brother Raoul who still lives there. Garfield's grandfather is the maternal grandfather of Garfield, Raoul, Sly and Garfield's other cousins and the father of Garfield's mother. Arno, Barney, Burley, Bernie, Bob, Ed, Edna, Evelyn, Harry, Hubert, Leo, Morty, Nick, Rockleva, Patrick and Roy and two other named sons. In both the comic strips and TV special continuity, Garfield's maternal granddad is a sulking, ill-tempered cat who continued to live in the Italian restaurant. Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt 1 and 2 Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt is a series of two online games previously found on Garfield's official website, now defunct, that involved a player controlling Garfield to find sugary sweet snacks in a haunted mansion filled with monsters. There's no time limit, but Garfield does have a maximum of how many times he can be scared before he runs off and quits the game. The first game was released in 2002 and an archived version can still be played. The second game, Donuts of Doom, which has a very similar premise to the first scavenger hunt was released in 2003 and an archive version of it can still be played. Garfield's Origins When Jim Davis was still thinking about what kind of comic strip he would make next, he noticed that there were a lot of successful strips about dogs but none about cats. Combining his wry wit with the art skill he had honed since childhood, Garfield, a fat, lazy, lasagna-loving, cynical cat, was born. Davis says Garfield is a composite of all the cats he remembered from his childhood, rolled into one feisty orange fur ball. Garfield was named after his grandfather, James Garfield Davis. Gorefield. Gorefield is a creature inspired by the orange cat from the comic strips Garfield, with the difference that Gorefield is much worse. His name is a combination of the words Gore and Garfield. Garfield's first appearance was in 2013, when a Garfield fan made a comic whose plot was supposed to be funny. In the comic, John sees his house looking strange until he gets to the kitchen and realizes that Garfield had eaten the entire house and its furniture. Although the comic should have been laughable, many viewers were disturbed by Garfield's grotesque final appearance. From there, many drew their version of the character on Reddit, then the fictional page SCP made an entry called SCP-3166, in which an entity in the form of Garfield was said that its skin was made from the fur of real cats and it manifested when the reception of Garfield franchises went into decline. After so many drawings, a Reddit user posted even more monstrous version of the cat, showing its extremely misshapen head and constantly changing body in the illustrations. It could be a worm, a spider, both, and it could even be a head with wings. Each illustration was accompanied by texts such as I want lasagna or the bullets do not work.
After an alleged scary game story of Garfield, the YouTube channel Lumpy Touch made an animation of the monster that recounted all the events of the supposed scary game for the Game Boy accompanied by the aforementioned user Reddit's design. After the animation, the same channel made another animation titled Garfield, and this one Odie seen walking happily while the deformed and monstrous cat followed him. Here the name of the character's Garfield was revealed for the first time. Heathcliff Controversy I guess this entry is referring to the fact that some people call Heathcliff a ripoff of Garfield, and some people say the same thing the other way round. For those who don't know Heathcliff, it is a comic strip created by George Gately in 1973 featuring the title character an orange cat. The comic strips are a single image, with the main protagonist being completely silent with a punchline at the bottom of the illustration. Now what probably made some people be mad at either comic is because they both came out very very close together. Heathcliff actually released early in 1973 and Garfield in 1976. Some may point to this as evidence that Jim Davis copied from Heathcliff, but this can be dismissed as at the time Heathcliff wasn't very popular and Jim created Garfield due to the lack of comics featuring cats instead of dogs. Lab Animal Lab Animal is a sixth chapter from the book Garfield His Nine Lives, which the plot goes like this. At a secret government facility, Lab Specimen 19GB, which is Garfield's sixth reincarnation, receives an unusual injection, followed by his escape from the military base. After swimming across a river, the serum has some unusual effects, causing 19GB to become a dog. Fortunately for 19GB, he became the same breed of dog the Lab sent out to find him, allowing him to blend in with the search dogs. The pursuing soldiers then call off the search as the dog looks at the reader with strange green eyes. Garfield then claims that because of this experience, as a lab animal, he became nauseous at the sight of medical equipment. This most likely explains his fear of the veterinarian. Love's Garfield website Love's Garfield website was created by a very dedicated couple, Kathy and his unnamed husband. As you can see, this is an unofficial fan-made website, which has several entries on it only the most dedicated Garfield fans would know of. On the About section, it reads, Kathy started collecting Garfield in 1985 when her brother gave her six Garfield plush toys when he left home. Those six stuffed animals turned into thousands of Garfield items. Like most normal people, I always enjoy reading the Garfield comics and probably had a Garfield mug or two. Prior to dating and marrying Kathy, I had no idea what I was in for. I married into Kathy's obsession in 1994. I would tell everyone that Kathy was a fanatical collector of Garfield. I always supported her Garfield collection and celebrated it as something that makes her distinctive. I would always refer to the collection as Kathy's. It was in 2006 at the Garfield gathering, after I fought Kathy for her new Garfield robe that she recently acquired from Doc Davis, Jim Davis's brother, that I realized maybe I was deeper into the lifestyle than I realized. So here I am in the 2006 Garfield gathering, doing the Garfield pyjama party, wearing Garfield lounge pants, a Garfield shirt, Garfield slippers and the new Garfield Garfield robe and I suddenly realized that maybe I was one of them. This has indeed been a very wholesome entry. I sure do hope that the next entry is in something horrifying. Lyman is in John's basement. As we all know, Lyman was first introduced on August 7th, 1978, and from there on had regular appearances on the Garfield comics, until he mysteriously and inexplicably disappeared on the 24th of April, 1983, without a trace. As of right now, there are several theories on what happened to Lyman, for example, the theory that Odie killed Lyman, or that Garfield is a mutant creature that continues to drain Lyman's life force. But the most compelling one is that he was abducted by aliens. As you can see from this strip mentioning Lyman from 2013, but this text was actually altered by a fan. In reality, the 2013 comic strip did really show Lyman on the front page of a newspaper, but the dialogue didn't actually mention him. Instead, it was just a joke about aliens, which is what gave birth to the abduction theory. While the fan theories are fun, they're nothing compared to what has been offered up by official Garfield-related media and Jim Davis himself. Case in 
point, in 2011, Garfield starred in the online Flash game Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt. In it, Garfield goes to a haunted mansion and in the basement he finds Lyman chained to a wall. Lyman even asks Garfield for a muffin. Whether or not John is responsible for Lyman's fate isn't answered, but things get even more unhinged in the sequel, Garfield's Scary Scavenger Hunt 2, Donuts of Doom. Back in the same mansion, Garfield finds Lyman once again, or part of Lyman. In the kitchen, Garfield is able to open the oven and inside is Lyman's severed head. Although this may be some very compelling evidence to what happened to Lyman, the games aren't considered canon due to the episode from the Garfield show Long Lost Lyman, where Odie misses his old owner, so he, John and Garfield set out to find him. Eventually it's discovered that Lyman has been living in the jungle, posing as a Bigfoot-like creature to protect it from poachers. However, many die-hard Garfield fans don't consider this series official Garfield canon, and they prefer the explanation that John is a vicious murderer. So pick your poison, I guess. Lumpy Touch. As described from his own website, Hi, I'm Lumpy Touch. I'm a YouTube animator who loves creepy pixel art. Nice to meet you. If you recognize this name, it's because you've been paying close attention to the video and realize he's the creator of Garfield Game Boy. As it can be observed from his website, he's absolutely dedicated to his craft, hosting several pixely games with a gory touch to it. My personal favorite is the Garfield Sands fight, where it takes place in the Undertale alternate universe under Garf. Absolute Kino out of 10. Nermal's owner. When he first appeared, it was stated that he was owned by John's parents, which was never mentioned again, nor is he seen on John's parents' farm. When he appears, it is usually because John has to babysit him. According to the episode Change of Mind, Nermal's owner leaves him at John's house every so often. By the way, Nermal is confirmed to be a he and not a she. Don't let those perky eyelashes confuse you like they confused me. Professor Garfield. Professor Garfield was a main character featured in Professor Garfield's series of educational material. He's similar to the regular Garfield in appearance, but with glasses with white hair similar to Albert Einstein. He's usually seen wearing a white lab coat. The Professor Garfield website describes him as a brainy zany cat with an insatiable appetite for learning. According to a comic posted on the Professor Garfield website, Professor Garfield is an alter ego of the regular Garfield. When Garfield John and Odie were vacationing in Bern, Switzerland, they visited a museum dedicated to Albert Einstein. When Garfield happened to put on a pair of Einstein's old glasses, he was transformed into the super smart Professor Garfield. Now he can summon these powers anytime he puts the glasses on. Square Root of Garfield Square Root of Garfield, also known as the Square Root of Minus Garfield, is a webcomic devoted to parodies and mashups of the popular comic strip Garfield. Several other people have created various different Garfield parodies. The creative said Garfield parody thought it would be cool to make one themselves. The problem is, the space of potential Garfield mashups is so large that in just a few minutes they had come up with six different ideas for exactly how they could turn a Garfield strip into a parody, and any given style of parody might get stale after a while. So they decided to make the mashup style variable from strip to strip. The styles will recur but every now and then they will come up with a new type of parody they can do. The Pipe Comic. The Pipe Comic is a legendary Garfield comic strip which was released on the 27th of July 1978. On first glance it may seem fairly humorous but in August 2019 a Twitter account called at Garfield Pipe helped popularize the meme by editing previous comic strips to make the third panel Garfield smoking out of John's pipe, making the punchline many times better than the original one back in 1978. Viacom deleted Garfield.com When you go and visit Garfield.com, it displays an error message which says CLOSURE. The site, following its discontinuation on June 19th, 2020, the site was closed following Viacom's acquisition of Pause Inc. The site now redirects visitors to the Garfield page on Nick.com automatically after 15 seconds. Alternatively, visitors can go to GoComics.com. <laughs>
What the Internet Did to Garfield What the Internet Did to Garfield is an absolute masterpiece produced by the YouTuber Super Eye Patch Wolf, which to briefly summarize the video, it's essentially a meta-commentary on the Garfield media created by their fan culture. I'm trying not to go into depth because I 110% recommend you go watch the video with your own eyes. I can guarantee you it's worth your time you're not immune to propaganda. The infamous you're not immune to propaganda Garfield meme was first posted on Tumblr on March 1st, 2018 by the user Mark Vomit. As it can be seen, this is another of many images depicting Garfield in an uncanny way and completely altered to his lazy, pessimistic comic self. Once again, like nearly every piece of Garfield fan media, once it got popular, parodies of said memes started spreading across the internet like a wildfire. We got an IRL Garfield, a Bendy one, a Simpsons bus one, a Lorax one, and even a normal variant of the meme. Deflated Garfield Deflated Garfield refers to a panel from a 1993 Garfield comic strip in which Garfield plans an inflatable decoy to distract his owner, John Arbuckle, with John panicking and thinking that Garfield is unwell when the decoy springs a leak. The panel gained viral spread in October 2020 as part of Garfield last panel replacement memes with at flat garf, novelty Twitter account popularizing this meme. The panel did not see use as a meme until October 5th, 2020, following the rising popularity of Garfield last panel replacement memes such as the Pipe Garfield and Dab Garfield. Twitter user at 0t0g4r1 posted the last panel from the comic with the real Garfield edited out, writing, losing my mind over this image. The tweet received over 6,800 retweets and 38,800 likes in a single month. Dog Sperm Oh boy! The Garfield dog semen comic strip refers to a strip of Garfield in which it appears that the punchline is that John Arbuckle has mistakenly drank from a cup of dog semen. Rumors about the intention behind the comic were discussed for over a decade online before the creator Jim Davis clarified the joke behind the comic strip in 2017. The earliest known mention of the comic's existence appeared on January 3rd, 2006 on the Straight Dope message board. It was mentioned on FARC two days later later. Several years later, the comic began gaining notoriety on Reddit. On May 4th, 2014, it was mentioned in a thread on r slash funny that gained over 2,600 upvotes and on Imgur by user Who's Go Flask, for which it gained 3,400 points. It was brought again on Twitter on January 22nd, 2015 by at CC Chof and gained over 3,000 retweets. This led to another Reddit thread, this time on r slash comics, which gained over 1,500 points. On July 4th, 2017, it was mentioned on r slash comedy cemetery and gained over 2,200 upvotes. On October 16th, 2017, user at real nutsling posted a photo announcing he had received a framed version of the comic strip, gaining over 4,100 retweets and 13,000 likes. This brought the internet's attention back to the comic, leading BuzzFeed to reach out to Jim Davies for clarification on the comic. On October 19th, 2017, BuzzFeed reported, on the farm we used to give first calf heifers a high protein supplement to help them deliver healthier calves. Davis said in a statement to BuzzFeed News, the supplement was provided by a veterinary. Since Liz is a vet, I assume that there would be a similar supplement for dogs, Davis said. So John is drinking a protein enriched drink formulated for pregnant dog. That's why Liz mentioned the healthier litter John would have because he had just drunk a supplement for pregnant dogs, not dog semen. There you have it, Davis said. Dr. Garfield Dr. Garfield, as it looks like, is essentially a carbon copy of Dr. Mario, but we replace all the characters with members of the Garfield comics. If you think that the game just looks a bit off and rather creepy, you're not alone. A Reddit user actually posted the video of his gameplay of the game to the r slash ARG subreddit, with Redditors in the comment section discussing if the game was an actual ARG, which as of right now, it doesn't appear to be so. Garfield Gender Debate Garfield Gender Debate refers to the heated online discussion surrounding the gender of the American cartoon character Garfield, which was brought into question by the podcast Virgil Texas. On February the 23rd, 2017, the aforementioned podcaster tweeted a message declaring that Garfield is gender neutral, citing Garfield creators James Davis's description of his character from an interview article published by Mental Floss in 2014. Shortly after, Texas tweeted a screenshot of 
of Garfield's Wikipedia page, which he had edited and updated to list its gender as none. Within the first week, Texas's tweet garnered more than 1,800 retweets and 5,800 likes in total. Over the next 72 hours, Virgil Texas's tweet set off an edit war in Garfield's Wikipedia page among the fans of the cartoon series and supporters of the genderless canon, leading to a lengthy and heated debate over the character's gender identity, with some participants citing original cartoon strips to make their case for and against the gender-neutral identity of Garfield. By February 27th, the Wikipedia page had been temporarily placed on lock due to edit warning slash content dispute. Though the debate quickly continued after the lock expired in the coming days, between February 24th and March 3rd, more than 40 edits were logged by various contributors on the site. On February 28th, Jim Davis issued a statement to the Washington Post and New York Daily News clarifying that Garfield is a male, and a statement from the Mental Floss interview had been taken out of context. Garfield is male, Davis told the Washington Post on Tuesday. He has a girlfriend, Arlene. I've always said that I wanted to work with animals because they're not perceived as being any particular gender, race, age, or ethnicity, the cartoonist said. In that sense, the humor could be enjoyed by a broader demographic. Garfield in the Fantastic Funnies The Fantastic Funnies is a one-hour special on comic strips produced by Bill Melendez and Lee Mendelssohn. It first aired on May 15th, 1980 on CBS. The special features live-action segments with Loney Anderson hosting as well as Charles Schlutz, creator of The Peanuts, Dick Brownie, creator of Hager the Horrible, Hank Ketchum, creator of Dennis the Menace, Johnny Hart, creator of BC, and other comic strip creators interviewed, and animated sequences, showcasing comic strips among them Peanuts, Hoger the Horrible, BC, Broomhilda, and Doonesbury. Loney Anderson introduces Garfield as a newcomer, having made its national debut only two years prior, and this special marking the character's first depiction in animated form. The strip is represented with a brief animated scene in the special. The segment includes adaptations of a comic strip from June 21st, 1978, July 2nd, 1979, August 2nd, 1978, July 21st, 1978, and finally, May 12, 1979. Gnorm Gnat. Gnorm Gnat was a comic strip by Jim Davis based on fictional insects and especially a mosquito named Gnorm. This strip was published in the Pendleton Times in Pendleton, Indiana from March 1st, 1973 to December 25th, 1975. Since the character did not achieve mainstream success, Davis turned his focus to the comic strip John, which was later reformulated into the comic strip we all know and love today, Garfield. Gothfield. Gothfield refers to fan art trend in which people draw Garfield in goth clothing, often with very feminine features. The trend began in late 2021, primarily appearing on Twitter and Tumblr. On November 14th, 2021, a Twitter user going by the handle at PupKittyFan1 posted their earliest known artwork of Garfield as a goth girl, gaining over 1,200 retweets and 10,000 likes in five days. On November 16th, 2021, at PupKittyFan1, Made the first post with the hashtag hashtag gothfield. This caused the hashtag to spread on Twitter over the following days as people posted their artwork based on the concept. One of the highest engagement examples was posted by at Mimo Etches Art, which gained over 2,000 retweets and 10,000 likes in three days. Jack Films predicted Garfield as Chris Pratt. This entry refers to when the literal god Apollo gifted Jack Films the ability to prophesize what was to come and predicted Garfield as Chris Pratt. On October 28th, 2021, Jack made a video titled We Fix the Worst Garfield Comic. Yesterday I Asked You, episode 591, where he jokes that Chris Pratt should voice Garfield. Soon after the video was posted, it was revealed that Chris Pratt would indeed be voicing Garfield in the upcoming 2020. For Garfield movie. Following the announcement, Jack posted the video to YouTube showing the clip titled Dude, I was kidding, adding a version of the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme to the end. Odie was based on a commercial. Odie may not have been based on a commercial, but his name has been confirmed to have been. The name Odie came from a car dealership commercial written by Jim Davis, which featured Odie the village idiot. Davis liked the name Odie and decided to use it again. When Garfield was first submitted, Davis called Odie Spot. Pizza was originally Garfield's favorite food. In the book 20 Years and Still Kicking, Garfield's 20th Anniversary Collection, Jim Davis stated that he wishes he had made pizza Garfield's favorite food rather than lasagna, as he claims that pizza is much easier to draw than lasagna is.
Stray Garfield mod. Um, yeah, this entry is quite literal. There exists a pretty awesome free mod for the 2022 exploration game, Stray, where you play as a cat exploring a city populated by robots. The mod changes the player model into Garfield, and it just looks hilarious when you see him in cutscenes. The mod got so popular that IGN made a video about it, which received over 112,000 views. Lasagna Cat. Oh boy, time for another exceptionally weird entry. Lasagna Cat is a web series created by Fatal Farm as a parody of the Garfield comic strips. The series was uploaded to YouTube between the years 2008 and 2017. The majority of Lasagna Cat consists of live-action reenactments of Garfield, with each reenactment followed by an absurd interlude segment. Most of the series' videos are only a few minutes long, with the exception of July 17, 1978, and Sex Survey Results, which are one and five hours long respectively. The series exists mainly to criticize the original Garfield's comic style of humor and as a tribute to its creator, Jim Davis. Veterans Day Comic The Veterans Day comic is an extremely unfortunate and bad-timed comic about a spider who tells Garfield, if you squish me I shall become famous, then says, they will hold an annual day of remembrance in my honor, you fat slob, with the last panel showing a spider working as a teacher while he addresses a group of other spiders saying, does anyone here know why we celebrate National Stupid Day? As previously mentioned, this was an extremely unfortunate and bad-timed comic because it released on Veterans Day and produced some controversy which ended up with Jim apologizing, not knowing the day it would be published would coincidentally be Veterans Day. Odie is pretending to be stupid. This entry may seem a bit far-fetched, but if you pay close attention to the comics, there's significant evidence that proves that the lovable dopey dog we all know may actually not be completely brain-dead. One of the main focuses of this theory is when Odie managed to use a computer to buy himself some toys using John's account all by himself. Another point of evidence is when he types out a comment, most likely from a keyboard, under a photo of him and Garfield. There are several other occasions where Odie has been proven to be smart. So I guess Odie's true intelligence may never truly be known. Garfield's Primal Self This fairly gruesome episode from Garfield His Nine Lives comic book where an orange house cat by the name of Tiger meets an ancient primal dangerous possibly evil force causing him to revert to an entirely feral state. The story ends with him preparing to attack his unsuspecting owner, an elderly woman. It is strongly suggested that he kills his owner afterwards. Garfield is shown to be terrified of the event in this life, his depicted cowering under a blanket in his commentary on it, remarking that this life I've taught him that there are elements in a cat that are not to be toyed with. Garfield The Lost Levels Garfield The Lost Levels is a game that was exclusive to Sega's paid Sega Channel service on the Sega Genesis slash Sega Mega Drive, which contained downloadable games, cheat codes and tips. The game contains three levels cut from the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive version of Garfield Caught in the Act. Bonehead the Barbarian, a Viking themed level. The Game Gear version of Caught in the Act includes this level and has a snow theme. One image has been found of it in play in Garfield The Lost Levels from someone's personal recording of the Sega world at Disney's innovations. There was a cut train segment in the Castablanca level in the Sega Genesis version of Caught in the Act. It is possible that the cut train segment was in Garfield The Lost Levels. A user named Lee Wang in the Lost Levels forums says Garfield The Lost Levels had that Casablanca level. Slobin Hood, a Forest Robin Hood level, this level is also included in the Game Gear version of Caught in the Act r slash I'm sorry John. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for this absolute behemoth of an entry. Before we can even begin to dissect this entry, we need to go to the very beginning of Garfield fan-made horror. On October 22nd, 2013, artist Double Baby posted a comic in which Garfield quite literally consumed and became his owner's house, and the artist used somewhat of a surrealist art style to depict this event in his comic. Later on, in 2018, the character was featured in the SOP Foundation as SCP-3. 3166, added by the SOP Foundation user Tan Honey on February 25th. And on September 12th, 2018, a Redditor who went by the username u slash mnvs posted an original three panel comic strip in which Garfold was reimagined as a horror creature in the r slash surreal meme subreddit. The comic gained over 15,700 upvotes in six months. On September 14th, a Redditor u slash idea for granted posted in the same subreddit a 3D animation of Garfield bound 
bouncing off the floor of the phrase consume lasagna, violently flashing on the screen which gained over 12,600 upvotes. On September 18th, 2018, horror artist William Burke posted a black and white drawing of Garfield on his Instagram page. The drawing depicted Garfield as a monster holding his owner, John Arbuckle, in its hand and demanding to be given lasagna. This post gained over 11,600 likes in a span of six months. Following the success of the first drawing in October 2018, William Burke created four more artworks of Garfield as a horrible creature, each of them receiving over 10,000 likes on the artist's Instagram page. The Will Burke's Garfield series has been multiple times reposted on Reddit, Twitter and other online platforms. For example, on October 7th, reposted on the subreddit r slash me IRL, gained over 18,800 upvotes in 11 months, and on October 12th, reposted on the r slash creepy subreddit and accumulated over 57,000 upvotes in 6 months. The October 7th repost is actually the original post which inspired the creation of r slash I'm sorry John subreddit, with u slash they made me darko creating the subreddit in response to the post. On October 8th, 2018, the subreddit r slash sorry John was launched, collecting original works dedicated to the character. And on October 29th, 2018, animator Lumpy Touch posted the video of a mock-up game based off the images on YouTube. The video gained over 766,000 views in 5 months, with Lumpy Touch continuing the series in the following month. The trend has since been picked up by other artists, including notable artwork by Omega Black. Today, r slash I'm sorry John is a highly active subreddit with almost 250,000 members and 10 moderators at the time of writing, with an active Discord server. Many artists post series of artwork in which Garfield takes new forms or seen in different settings. We're bachelors, baby. This phrase is used 11 times by Garfield in some of the comic strips. It shows how men like John and Garfield act. It's somewhat funny because in each one, whenever they need to do something, they make an excuse. This phrase has been taken by the Garfield fans and essentially turned into a kind of circle jerk, each more goofier and wackier than the last. For example, we have we're bachelors, baby, but every time they say bachelors, it gets faster. Garfield, but every time he says we're bachelors, baby, the effects change. And my personal favorite from the square root of minus Garfield where nothing is said in the first two panels followed by John saying we need new dishes and Garfield saying his all-time classic zinger we're bachelors baby <laughs> Why do they call it oven? Why do they call it oven refers to a nonsensical yet in my honest opinion pretty hilarious copy pasta reading Why do they call it oven when you off in the cold food off out hot eat the food? Yes, I did have a little bit of a stroke there while reading it. The copy pasta later became associated with an edited Garfield strip when John Arbuckle sang the phrase causing it to be associated with the comic. On August 31st, 2013, the Twitter user Yashishi DSF posted the tweet that read Why do they call it oven when you off in the cold food off out hot eat the food. The question appeared on reddit's r slash ask reddit on September 5th 2018 although it gained no points. The free started gaining attention after tumblr user Iwan and Noelav posted the still form Garfield with John Arbuckle asking the question on August 20 2019 gaining over 79,000 notes. The picture and its ensuing thread grew popular outside of tumblr. For example on December 20th 2019 the picture appeared in reddit's r slash brand new sentence, gaining over 1,800 upvotes. The phrase began seeing use in several meme templates over the course of 2020, oftentimes these would be associated with Garfield. For example, on March 20th, 2020, Twitter user at BlushBuns tweeted a fake poster with the phrase and Garfield, gaining over 2,200 retweets and 6,000 likes. On March 21st, 2021, Redditor ToastyGhost37 posted the Panzer the Lake variant in r slash vsojo, gaining over 550 upvotes upvotes. Why Garfield Hates Mondays In an interview, Jim Davies revealed the true nature of the classic phrase I hate Mondays. Jim says, Garfield does not have a job. Garfield does not go to school and every day is the same. Nevertheless, every Monday is just a reminder that his life is the same old, same old cycling again and for some reason, even though his life is pretty much the same every day, on Monday specifically, awful things tend to happen to him physically.
I Know Where You Live. The I Know Where You Live meme is another piece of Garfield media turned into a shitpost. The origins of this come from an episode of the Garfield show, where at the end of the episode Garfield looks to the viewer and says the iconic line, I know where you live, preceded by the episode's abrupt end and the credits start rolling, but instead of displaying the actual credits, the YouTuber, the Cauldron Commander, added them out and displayed an IP number like if they were of the viewer, essentially as if the shitpost itself were to dox the viewer. I know where you live. Bill, Murray and Lorenzo Music coincidence. Ever since Lorenzo Music's death due to various bone and lung cancers, Frank Welker generally replaced Lorenzo Music as the voice of Garfield the Cat in recent productions based off the Garfield franchise. Bill Murray also voiced Garfield in the live action films Garfield the Movie and Garfield the Tale of Two Kittens. Coincidentally, Music voiced Murray's character of Dr. Peter Venkman in The Real Ghostbusters. Possibly even greater of a coincidence, Bill Murray said to be the main reason that Lorenzo Music was fired in the first place. Murray complained to the studio that the character sounded too much like Garfield, then later took on the live action role of Garfield. Black Bart. Black Bart is a character which appeared in the episode The Legend of Johnny Ragweed Seed, which is the 106th episode of Garfield and Friends. In the episode, Black Bart and Beige Bart are two famous criminals who use some trickery to initially manage to rob a town's bank by framing it on Johnny Ragweed Seed, but later on the town realizes that Johnny isn't the culprit but instead the duo Black Bart and Beige Bart. China banned Garfield. According to an article from the Times of India, China has banned any content featuring Garfield due to the fat cat's fur matching human skin color. Cohen Brothers Garfield Movie Misconception After 2004's Garfield the Movie was released, Bill Murray revealed that he signed on to the project because he thought that one of the brothers, Joel Cohen, to be precise, was a writer on it. However, he was confused as it was actually screenwriter Joel Cohen writing the film alongside Alex Sokolow. As you can see, Garfield's Joel has one H too many to be a Cohen. It's pretty hilarious, but it gets even better. As noted by Collider, Bill explains that he didn't read the entire script but believed it would be simply be good fun to do some voice work on the family film. However, his expectations soon turned sour when he actually got around to recording the lines, losing faith in the project fast. He decided to take a look at what the filmmakers already had, he wasn't impressed. Looking at the footage, he was baffled and has since clarified the moment he learned the truth, he was watching and saying, who the hell cut this thing? Who did this? What the was Cohen thinking. He then admits, and then they explained to me it wasn't written by that Joel Cohen. The satirical news site Hard Drive recently resurfaced the confusion by publishing a joke article headlined, Cohen Brothers Admit They're Only Directing Garfield Movies Because They Thought Bill Murray Was In It. Garfield, Atari 2600 game. Garfield is an unfinished video game prototype that was developed for the Atari 2600. The game was never officially released due to the video game crash of 1983, which resulted in the cancellation of many other games that were being produced by Atari, including a Garfield game for the Atari 5200. It is based on the popular comic strip of the same name. The game revolves around Garfield trying to find normal while avoiding Odie. In the game, Garfield starts by hopping around the fence and eating burgers. Next he ducks as flower pots are thrown at him while he's on the fence. Then Garfield must cross the top of the roof to get to the other side of the yard, but he must watch out for Odie who likes to sneak up on the cat unaware. He must jump on top of a dog pound of Odie's eating burgers and avoiding flower pots. Finally he has to rescue Nermal who is hanging on the edge of the roof. Due to the game being unfinished, the game starts over with a screen in a different order. Now here's a fun fact of the game. On May 7th 2020, musician Nikki Flowers streamed themselves on Twitch setting a world record high score in the game with I'm not gonna even read the number, which it appears to be 1.9 octillion. According to former Twin Galaxies chief referee Robert T. Murkizek, it is the highest recorded score in any video game in history ever. Garfield and Sonic Pack The Garfield and Sonic Pack is a compilation game for Microsoft Windows released in 1999 for only the United States and oddly enough Taiwan. It includes a Sonic compilation title alongside two additional Sega Mega Drive games, one of which stars comic and cartoon icon Garfield. 
Garfield comics take place during his eighth life. I'm pretty sure that this theory is essentially true. The eighth chapter of the book Garfield His Nine Lives is about everything Garfield learned up to now culminates in what is currently his eighth life, although he admits that it falls short of his expectations. The story is a retelling of Garfield's origins as he is being born, gets his first taste of lasagna, is adopted by his owner John, and meets Odie for the first time. So theory confirmed, I guess. Garfield phones in a France beach. For 30 years, residents of a seaside town in France have watched as one peculiar item continued to wash ashore. Bright orange pieces of plastic were constantly littering the beach, and these weren't any ordinary pieces of plastic. They were remnants of Garfield phones. Now, the mystery of the ever-flowing Garfield phones was resolved when a group of volunteers from a local anti-litter group set out to explore caves, and nestled deep within one found a shipping container filled with Garfield phones. It turns out out, during a stormy night, a container ship lost a few of its containers, one of them being filled with Garfield phones, and found its way into a cave near Brittany's beaches. Garfield's Judgment Day Garfield's Judgment Day is a Garfield book based on an unfinished animated feature published in 1990. Unlike the other Garfield books, this book is a picture book format rather than the comic book format. Jim Davis wrote this story as a script for a feature-length theatrical Garfield cartoon when the primetime animated specials were still in production and popular. Voices were recorded, songs were written and recorded, but no studio wanted to fund the animation, apparently because of the dark, serious tone of the story. After unsuccessful pitching it as a movie and eventually as a television special for several years, Davis tried writing two other feature-length scripts to studios such as Walt Disney Pictures and 20th Century Fox to no avail. Garfield Eats Garfield Eats was a fast food restaurant network funded by Nathan Mesri and Pascal Hader based on the Garfield comic strips. The restaurant served entries such as pizza, lasagna and drinks. When one made an order, a door motorcycle would drive to the customer's doorstep. Those waiting for food could watch episodes of Garfield and Friends. Jim Davis has described the restaurant as entergaging, a combination of entertaining and engaging. The building had a Garfield mascot costume and customers could book parties. The restaurant's mode was farm to plate, and meaning most of the food's ingredients were naturally grown and raised at a farm with no pesticides or preservatives. The restaurant also had an app game named Garfield's Food Truck, available on iOS and Android. After the Toronto restaurant closed in November 2020, the Garfield Eats brand was relegated to a frozen food line. The Toronto location was later bought by a local pizza chain maker, and in December 2021, the brand was defunct after Viacom CBS, now Paramount Global, ended its license licensing deal. Garfield PlayStation 2 Games Unused Cutscenes The game simply called Garfield for PlayStation 2 and Windows was an action hack and slash video game which just looked pretty goofy overall so basically just looked like your average PlayStation 2 game. On the wiki page for the game it mentions a total of two unused cutscenes, the first of which is titled Kiss.PSS where Arlene kisses Garfield. It should be noted that it is not present in the PC version. The next is Dutch.PSS which is the English intro with the Dutch subtitles, which, while used in the PC version, it remains unused in the PlayStation 2 version due to the lack of a Dutch option. John Comic Strip John was a weekly comic strip created by Jim Davis, first published by the Pendleton Times from January 8, 1976 to March 2, 1978. Originally the prototype of the comic strip Garfield, Davis later adapted some of the strips for Garfield. After losing interest in his comic strip Gnorm Gnat, Jim Davis decided to do a comic strip called John, and had the strip run from January 1976 to March 1978. The strip centered around John Arbuckle, a bachelor cartoonist and his cat Garfield. Supporting characters included Lyman, his dog Spot, renamed later Odie for Garfield, resulting in a rewrite of one of the adapted strips featuring him, Irma, and Liz, originally depicted as a server at Irma's diner. Although John was still considered the main character, Garfield's role in the strip gradually expanded and on September 1st, 1977, the strip was renamed to Garfield. On January 24th, 1978, Garfield was picked up by United Features Syndicate to go national, and in March 1978, Pendleton Times posted its last comic. Garfield would soon premiere nationally on June 19, 1978. 
And this is the end of part 1 of the ultimate Garfield iceberg. I'm sorry if I disappointed some of you for not making a single whole iceberg, but if I were to do the alternative it would just put way too much pressure on me to release a video as soon as possible due to YouTube's algorithm. Now if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and maybe even a subscribe if you will. And with that said I'll see you in part 2 of the ultimate Garfield iceberg. See ya!